Today, we're going to know and learn about for Bill's ideologies in the Child Center School. Are you excited to know it? Yes, I know that you are excited because it is one of our educational system that adopted today. Without further ado, we will watch first a short video presentation about Probilis ideologies in a child-centered school. Let's watch this. You take 30 children, all different children, from all different socioeconomic environments, and you put them together in a room to have to work in lockstep. You're essentially telling them there's no joy in education, that your creativity is not necessary. I've been waiting for the chance to prove myself. That curiosity is getting squashed for the academics. The impulse has been trained out. I'm here to get an A and I'm here to get done. What we're raising are a lot of really great test takers. And that's not a way to develop as a creative thinker. Tomorrow, students are going to need different skills that we can't even imagine. Why does my five-year-old get two hours of homework? Do you even know my son? It was the first time where we sort of put him in the hands of the state. I've been waiting for the chance to break it down. We can't really solve the problem if we don't understand how we got into it. Now in kindergarten, they do things like teach children how to read and mathematics. That was not exactly what it was designed for. The story gets bigger and bigger, and it turns out Milton Bradley was involved, and it turns out Frank Lloyd Wright was a product of this, and Charles Eames at Buckminster Fuller. And we had, for a solid 60, 70 years, the greatest early childhood education in the world. And then we consciously decided to stop. Many of the answers that we're looking for may well lie in history, and we just need to pick them up. But the story of the history of kindergarten shows us how we got to where we're at right now. The Garden of Children. The Children's Garden. So, after watching the trailer, why it is important to study Probel's ideologies in a child-centered school? It is important because he was the first to recognize that children experience brings significant brain development in their first three years of life. And his kindergartens were based on the philosophy that humans are essentially created beings that need to be given the opportunity to experience, learn, and develop on their own terms and in their own time frame. But before we start our discussions, what are the three important points that we are going to know about this topic? There are three important points that we are going to discuss. First, is Frederick's Probeel views in education. Second, is the kindergarten themes. And third, is the kindergarten curriculum. Probeel's kindergarten system developed as an international education system and found a place throughout the whole world, including Philippine schooling system. Before we explore his ideologies, we will first get to know him a little context about Probeel's existence. Friedrich Probeel was born on April 21, 1782 in Oberwestbach, a small village in Tonegea, Germany. Probeel's mother died when he was nine months old. When Friedrich was four years old, his father remarried, feeling neglected by his stepmother and father. He experienced a profoundly unhappy childhood. The year 1805 marked a turning point in Probel's life. He went to Frankfurt, extending to become an architect, but instead ended up teaching in a preparatory school. The effect of this teaching experience on Probeel was such that he decided to make education his life's work. In 1808, he went to Everdon, Switzerland, 
where he tutored boys attending Johan Pestalozzi's Institute. Feeling somewhat lacking in his own educational background, he left Eberdon in 1811 and studied at the universities of Göttingen and Berlin until 1816. In 1816, Probeel opened the Universal German Educational Institute at Kelham, a school based on his own educational theories. Its curriculum was comprehensive in nature, covering all aspects of students' growth and development, both physical and mental. Answering to the first important point of Bradley's Probeel views on education, some of the issues and concepts that Probeel dwells on to express his views in education are living and learned environment, play, music and rhythm, gifts, which are the manipulative toys, and the role of adults in the education, the role of parents and teachers. Understanding and recognizing the nature is an important aspect of child education. He stresses on the importance of giving children training and gardening and nature research by Bedja et al. 2015. Gardening and caring for animals in order to induce sympathy for plants and animals. Rubel put great emphasis on play in child education, just like work and lessons. Games or play should serve to realize the child's inner destiny. Games are not idle time wasting. They are the most important step in the development of a child, and they are to be watched by the teachers as close to how the child is developing. Robel was especially interested in the development of toys for children, what he called gifts device to stimulate learning through well-directed play. Play is an essential educational tool in order to develop children's feelings and thoughts and make them gain courage and stink and motivation by ASHA 2015. Motor activities that guide play process are not meaningless activities, but a biological necessity that gives happiness and facilitates exploring and understanding function by Mita 2015. The play of children is not recreation. It means earnest work. For music and rhythm, in his mother play and nursery songs book, he published the finger games on songs that he designed to support physical, mental, social, and ethical development of children by Asha 2015, by Jaital 2015 and Manning 2005. Playing games and singing songs for the purpose not only exercising the limbs and voice, but also instilling a spirit of humanity and nature. Toy 
Choice Ethical Gifts and Occupation by Toby 2013. For example, however, they encourage child's learning in a number of different ways, enabling them to learn universal concepts through object manipulation and support physical mental maturation at a higher level. By Asha 2015, Post 2014, Provenzo 2009, and Watson 2000. When designing gifts and occupation, Proville adhered to unity, respect, and play. Gifts were wooden cubes, spatially designed six soft colored bulls, blocks, a wooden spear, cube, cylinder, and sticks. Occupation included a wide range of activities including sewing, weaving, painting, clay, sand, mat, and carton modeling, paper folding, cutting, and sticking by Makan 2013, Saracho and Spadik 2009, Quarter and Wolanski 2008, and Carr 2003. He believed in the importance of supporting family life and educating humanity by Probill 1967. Unwanted parents to play an active role in life and education of children by Asha 2015. Relationship between teachers and parents are as important as the one between adults and children by Quarter and Wolanski 2008. Roles of teachers at Probill schools include play, Observing, supporting, and extending learning process, encouraging students' curiosity and questions, extending their thoughts, helping them to develop self-discipline, supporting them to solve their own problems, and doing joint activities with parents. The second important point focuses on kindergarten theme in which Probill's kindergarten philosophy the Education of Man, 1826. He articulated the following idealist themes. First, all existence originates in and with God. Second, humans possess an inherent spiritual essence that is the vitalizing life force that causes development. And third, all beings and ideas are interconnected parts of a grand, ordered and systematic universe. He viewed man as a child of God, of nature, and of humanity, who must learn to understand his own unity, diversity, and individuality, corresponding to this tripled aspect of his being. On the other hand, man must understand the unity of all things, the pantheistic element. Education consists of leading man as a thinking, intelligent being, growing into self-consciousness to a pure and a solid, conscious and free representation of the inner law of divine unity, and in teaching him ways and means thereto. School, instead, should be the place to which the pupil comes to know the inner relationship of things, things meaning God, man, nature, and their unity. In Probel's view, the school is to concern itself not primarily with the transmission of knowledge, but with the development of character and the provision of the right motivation. The kindergarten is a special educational environment in which this self-active development occurs. The kindergarten's gifts occupations, and social and cultural activities, especially play, promote this self-actualization. Probill was convinced that the kindergarten primary focus should be on play, the process by which he believed children express their innermost thoughts, needs, and desires. For Probill, play facilitated children's process of cultural recapitulation, imitating of adult vocational activities and socialization. According to Probel's theory of recapitulation, each individual human being repeated the general cultural epoch in his or her own development. Using play, songs, 
stories, and activities, the kindergarten was designed as an educational environment in which children, through their own self-activity, could develop in the right direction to learn. The curriculum, which is the third important point, consisted chiefly of three types of activities. First, playing with the gifts or toys, and engaging in other occupations designed to familiarize children with inanimate things. Second, playing games and singing songs for the purpose not only of exercising the limbs and voice, but also of instilling a spirit of humanity and nature. And third, gardening and caring for animals in order to induce sympathy for plants and animals. All this was to be systematic activity. Rubel's kindergarten was designed to meet its child's need for physical activity, the development of sensory awareness and physical dexterity, creative expression, exploration of ideas and concepts, the pleasure of singing, the experience of living among others, and satisfaction of the soul. In 1837, he opened the first kindergarten in Blankenburg, Germany. Kindergarten means both children's garden and garden for children. His purpose was to raise free people who think and take action by Stephen 1994. In this context, a kindergarten is designed to take the child's physical, social, emotional development fields and maximize his potential by Carter and Wolensky, 2008. 50 children between ages 2 and 7 are registered at the school, offers flexible conditions for working parents, and helps poorer children with food and clothing support by Wilson, 2000. All these services are free of charge. He defines kindergarten as the home of future generations, teachers as gardeners, and students as plants that are grown by teachers, by Asha 2015. In the early 21st century, kindergarten teachers continue to emphasize Probil's ideas of developing the social side of a child's nature and sense of readiness for learning. The important outcome for the kindergarten child is readiness for the intellectual learning that will come later in his educational career. The kindergarten provide a milieu that encourages children to interact with other children under the guidance of a loving teacher. Rubel's reputation as an early childhood educator left remarkable traces in preschool education systems. Child development theories and approaches increased and kindergartens were established around the world, adopting his approach and using his materials and exercises. Kindergarten did not exist before Probeel. Now, it is mandatory because of its significance in the educational process for children. Nowadays, many institutions are working with the progressive ideas developed by Probeel because they appreciate children's holistic development. To summarize our discussion, we learned that Redwich Probeel views in education expressed through living and learned environment, play, music and rhythm, gifts, and the role of adults in education. He put great emphasis on play in child education because it is the most important step in the development of a child. His idealist theme inspires and influences many institutions around the world that a school should be the place to which the pupils come to know the inner relationship of things, meaning God, man, nature, and their unity as threefold aspects of his being. And to concern itself not primarily with the transmission of knowledge, but with the development of character and the provision of the right motivation. His kindergarten curriculum, which adopted by today's educational system in the early childhood education, in which it consists of playing with toys or gifts, games, singing songs and rhymes, and gardening and love of animals. 
It was designed to develop the children holistically. I'm your reporter, Eva Misalrodan, who will say, Children are like tiny flowers. They are buried and need care, but each is a beautiful alone and glorious when seen in a community of peers by Friedrich Verbeer. Do you have any questions or comments regarding this topic? Just send to my email address at roldaneva96 at gmail.com. That's all for today. Thank you for watching.